Hey guys, Archbishop. Hello guys. I was supposed to be on at 8.22, but I was flying in the air. Pastor Lochner, bless you. Tell your wife I said hello. I was supposed to be on at 8.22, but I am late because I was flying back from Dallas. Um, I had an amazing weekend. I'm not going to be long um, because I was so late. But I wanted to keep my... Oh, Jesus. Can you come get this for me, son? My son is cooking in the kitchen while I'm on the live, so going to hear it. Hi, Mommy. Yep, there he is. Trying to hide. Thank you. He's cooking me some food. He's such a good son. Um, but I wanted to jump on. I had such a full weekend, an amazing weekend. Um, hey, guys. I had such an amazing weekend. Um, pretty full. And I don't have any voice left, but it was great. Sending love from Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Yes, from Mount Zion. Yes. Um, somebody saying hi to Cherub. Yes, Shrub. How's those beautiful babies? Um, love your voice. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, I'm just going to be on just a few minutes again because I made a commitment that I would go live. Um, kiss them for me, Cherub. Um, that I would go live uh, every Monday till I didn't have anything to say. And I did have a little something that I just wanted to talk about. Um, we've been just really putting an emphasis on... Um, on positioning ourselves so that our prayers can be answered. Positioning ourselves, Pastor Shipley, God bless you. Um, positioning ourselves so that our prayers can be answered. Putting ourselves in alignment with God's will so that he can answer our prayers. And um, many of us have petitions before God and I am telling you that I believe that this is the year that God is going to answer prayers. He is going to answer some things that you haven't seen, that you've been praying about for long periods of time. There are some things that I've had before God for many years, things that I want to do, things that I want to see happen. And I believe that if we align ourselves with the will of of God, if we pray according to his will, and that is the, um, the scripture that I have been in, um, in first Peter chapter number four, you all right, baby, be careful with that grease. Um, first Peter chapter number four, uh, and I'm getting ready to go to it right now. You probably had water in the pan. If you had water in the pan already, that's why that grease is popping like that. Who knows something about that? Okay. Um, first Peter. First Peter 4, and I believe it was 7 that I read that the end of all things is near. Therefore be self-disciplined and sober minded so that your for the sake it says for the sake of your prayers right be sober minded so that you pray and that you pray according to his will that you pray according to God's will that you're in alignment with his plan and his purpose and then what you pray he will answer what you pray, he will answer when it is according to his will. And so that that is where we've been, where I've been uh, dealing out of. That is where God has had me um, the last, you know, couple of weeks. 
because I want to pray according to God's will. I want to see something happen. And some of the time we don't see manifestation because we are not praying according to his will. And we get mad at God because we don't see what it is that we're praying for. But is it the will of God for your life? Is it the will of God for your life? And so um, I, I just believe that prayer is essential at this point, at this time. Prayer is essential, especially in the beginning of the year. It's not about making resolutions. It is not about, um, you know, it, we want to set goals and I understand that I've got goals and dreams and desires that I've put out into the atmosphere. But at the same time, I want to be in position. And so I want to take a few minutes, a few days in the beginning of the year to make sure that I am in position. And that is what sobering up is. Sobering up is, is coming to a realization it's, it's I'm not drunk with myself. I'm not drunk with, um, you know, what I want. I'm not drunk with my own desires, but I'm sober minded and I'm aware because I know that I need God to do this, this and this. And the only way that I can get it is if it's in his will, if I'm in alignment with his purpose. Thank you, First Lady. God can do anything. He can save. He can heal according to his will. God can do anything but fail. And that is the truth. That is the truth. He is, he never fails, but we've got to be in the will of God. We have to be in the alignment of God. And, and one of the things I wanted to speak about tonight is just being careful that we are intentional about growing deep and not growing high. That we are intentional about growing deep about getting out that that's part of being sober minded is getting our roots into into place into position rooting ourselves and grounding ourselves so that when when things come they don't sway us and and cause us to be out of control you know i used to ride the train to school every day anybody that rides public tea um you know that if you're standing up on a train, that train is rocking and rolling. You don't, you don't, you don't, um, you know, you got to plant yourself. You have to anchor yourself. So you don't, cause I don't like falling on other people. I don't even like, I don't even want to touch nobody on the train. And so it, the only way to do that is to really anchor yourself. And the truth is you never lock, you know, they talk about lock knees. We're not talking about lock knees tonight, but <laughs> If you want to train and you try not to fall, you don't lock your knees. You bend them slightly and that will keep you. When you lock yourself up, you're, you, you're liable to fall over. But when you bend your knees a bit, it will keep help you to go with the flow. And so we're in a place where we got to be on bended knees. We got to be on bended knees. You got to bend your knees so that so that you are balancing your life. That you're balancing your life. And so we can't be so concerned with growing high or wide because many people just want to grow high and wide because high and wide is what people can see. If I grow high and if I grow wide, then everybody sees me. But when I grow deep, nobody sees me growing deep. Growing deep is not visual. Growing deep is doing the groundwork. And the deeper you're planted, the higher you can grow. I've said it before, but a tree, uh, you know, the highest trees in Brooklyn have the deepest roots. And I'm saying Brooklyn because I know Brooklyn. The highest trees have the deepest roots. And so if you want to grow high, you got to first grow deep. Deep is not what people see. Deep is your private prayer time. This right here, what I'm doing, this is not, this not deep. This is me coming to you and, and sharing with you. But I've had to do work outside of this. In order to be able to say anything and give anything. I have anything to give to other people. 
And so many of us want to be seen and want to want to be, you know, want God, God, I want you to do it in 22 and I want you to bless me in 22. But we've got to make sure that we're intentional about growing deep. So that when we get high and wide, we are able to sustain any tree that doesn't have proper roots. The higher it is, that tree is going down and it's going down hard. Try it up, son. That tree is going down and it's going down hard. Thank you, lady boy. We got to be rooted and grounded in what? In what? In God's word. Happy birthday, Lyndon. I love you. We got to be rooted and grounded in God's word. And not just what we say to God or when, when we pray his, his word. We've got to be rooted in prayer. But I, I repeated it the other day that I heard Dr. Bynum say that prayer is just as much about what we hear as it is about what we say. She didn't say it quite like that, but but prayer is is just as much about what you hear from God as it is what you say to God. And many of us want to talk, 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 talk God to death. And we got to get to a place where we're willing to hear God. And sometimes, you know, that's not that's not easy to do because it takes a, a moment of stillness. It takes a moment of meditation. It takes a moment of cutting off the TV and, and cutting off social media. You know, if you got to cut me off to talk to God right now, to hear from God, go and cut me off. Go and, go and cut, log right off. Whatever you have to do to hear from God, you know, and as sometimes it takes a minute to learn the voice of God. Sometimes it takes a minute to learn the voice of God because sometimes we, we got so many things coming in and out of our space, in and out of our head space, right? Those are things that cause us not to be sober minded. When we get sober minded, we try to keep our minds stayed on God, stayed on him throughout the day. I mean, it, 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 you're not going to think about God 24 hours a day. Anybody that tell you that they think about God 24 hours a day, go the other way. But throughout your day, you ought to have your mind on something godly. And, and you ought to do it whenever you think about it. Whenever, whenever something, you ought to take a minute and think on the things of God. Meditate on these things. Whatsoever things are lovely. Whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are true. Think on these things. Because that's what keeps us sober minded. That's what keeps us sober minded. And so we can't be so concerned with growing high and wide. To be seen right we got to we got to be concerned about growing deep because depth is what determines height I, I can, would somebody put it in the comments i sound like a real preacher now just put it in the comments depth determines height your depth is going to determine your height and I know we see people look like they're doing amazing things. They really do. They really look high on the hog. They do. And a lot of us know that they're really not, you know, rooted. But don't let that, don't let that sway you. Those of you that have been faithful, those of you that have been faithful over few things, those of you have who have trusted God in this season, don't let other people seemingly being blessed above you make you, you know, switch up. Don't let it do that. Because people that have no depth but have height will not be able to maintain. They will not be able to sustain. And that's the name of the game. I, I don't want to be high for a minute. I don't want to be high for one season. I want God to be able to sustain me at the level that he has me. I'm glad to be home too, Dad. I love you. 
I want God to sustain me at where, where he places me. This year, I'm telling y'all, for those that will be faithful and will align themselves with your, with your leader, with your church, with, your, with God's word, with your relationship with God, I am telling you, God is going to bless and it's going to be a sustainable blessing. It's going to be a sustainable blessing. And so don't be afraid by the temporary stuff that you see people get. Don't be weary in well-doing. Because due season is about the fact that I've, I've, I've worked on my depth in the dark. Y'all could put that in there too. I'm working on my depth in the dark. Is it right? Make it right now. Mama's hungry. <laughs> I'm working on my depth in the dark. Because when the light comes, the light exposes everything. All the flaws, all the pimples, all the bumps, all the... The, 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 it, it exposes everything when the light get on you. You get on that HD light, baby, and the stuff ain't right. It's going to show everything. Okay? Everything is going to be out there. So I want to work on my depth in the dark. I want God to develop me in the dark. I want to, I want to root myself in the dark so that when the light comes and it starts to expose this, that, and the other, I don't, I don't have to run and hide because I don't want this to be seen and I don't want that to be seen. So we got to work on, um, sustaining. We, we want a sustained blessing. How many of y'all want a sustained blessing? I, I don't want a temporary, you know, I, I said it years ago. I don't, I don't want God. I don't want to ask God to put a bandaid on stuff. I don't want, I don't want no temporary. I want a sustainable blessing. I want a sustainable blessing. I want something that I can hold on to, that I can pass down. And I'm not just talking about money. But I, I'm talking about blessings that go from generation to generation. I want sustainable blessings. I, I thank God for my parents because I believe that I am experiencing sustainable blessings. That things my parents, you know, developed years ago. That we, my brother, my sister, and myself, my children, my sister's children, my brother's children are, are having are experiencing the residuals of those blessings. And that is the kind of blessing that you want to get from God in this season. Not something that is temporary. Not something that's going to fade away. Not something that's quick. You want a sustainable blessing. You want something that's going to be able to pass down from generation to generation. And many people ask us about our family and how do y'all get to do this? And how do y'all get, y'all got so much talent and y'all got so, I believe that those things are sustained. They've been sustained over the years. Somebody prayed for them and then somebody else prayed to sustain them. And somebody else put in some work in the next generation. And somebody else is putting some work in the next generation. And that's the kind of blessing that we want flowing through our lives. And so I have to concentrate in, in a window because sometimes you only have a window to develop depth. So, Sometimes you only have a small window, a period of time with which with you have with in which you have to develop depth. Oh, God, my sister's on here. I need you to put in that you're that you're joining the live from New Zealand, Anisha. I'm I have I have people on my live from New Zealand. Can you please put that in there, Nation, so that it's documented? Okay, I'm excited. 
Um, but it has to be a sustainable blessing, generational blessing. Don't, don't just look for God to do temporary stuff in this season. Wellington, New Zealand. Let's go, baby. Thank you. <laughs> let's, let, let's, let's not ask God for little stuff in this season. Let's say, Lord, I'm aligning myself so that you can do that thing that I've been, that I've been really, really praying for. I, I'm aligning myself not to get a couple extra dollars. Now I, I'm aligning myself for you to set me up so I can set somebody else up. We do look alike now, right now. I I am. I want God to do something in this season that is going. That's just going. I'm be able to bless people that come into my life. And so that is what we want to do. We want to develop the depth and you've got a small window in which to do it. You have a small window in which to develop that depth. That's why it is important. Even our churches um, right now, we're fasting and praying, um, but you've got a small window. And that's why it's important in the beginning of the year to take that time and really go after God. Not, not the resolutions. But God align me. Put me in your will. I'm going to take January. And I'm going to ask you to just, just put me in your will. To align me. To, to get me right. Get my mind right. Get my spirit right. Especially after all that we've been through. After all that is going on in the world. God just, just, just do something in me this month. So that. When February comes and when the when the first quarter it gets here, when the second quarter gets here, I'm I'm I've got momentum going because I've done the depth work. And I and I've I've rooted myself in whatever God wants to do in my life. And so I'm coming on to encourage you. I was supposed to be on at eight. I was I was um, flying back from Dallas, um, but I I said I'm gonna get on because I that's what I made I made a vow to you I made a vow to myself I told God as long as you'll give me something to say I'm gonna show up on Mondays I'm gonna show up and um, and just try to um, give you what the Lord gives me it's blessing me and I pray that it's blessing you. You know, I, I am determined that there are some things that I've held back in years past because there is a sacrifice that comes with growing deep. There's a sacrifice that comes with aligning ourselves. There's a sacrifice that comes with it. And so if we're not willing to make the sacrifice, we cannot expect to get the promise. And so um, I really want to encourage you to, to let, let's grow deep. Let's grow deep. Let's grow deep. This is not about height because I, I put it up today um, that we are so concerned with victory. We, we got to get the victory. Lord, give us a victory. And God is saying, what have you learned in the fight? What, what have you learned in the journey to victory? What are, what are you getting in that process? Because I don't, I, I don't think God is as concerned with the victory as we are. He already got the victory. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. He already got it. It's not something that he's, you know, that's us. We want the victory. And we should want it. But Lord, what is it in this process that I am developing? What, what depth am I getting? Because when I get the victory, I need to hold the victory. I need to maintain the victory. I don't want to... Y'all know how many people get victory and lose it. 
I have gotten the victory. I mean, shown up victory and can't find it. Can't find it. Can't find it nowhere. Then lost it. And so God is not as concerned about us getting the victory as he is about us learning the lesson in the fight. And when you focus on the fight, when you focus on the lesson, when you focus on the depth, then all these things will be added unto you. There is no good thing that God is going to withhold from his people. No good thing. But we got to, we got to develop depth in the dark and height and width and span and the length and breadth and all of that is going to come you know many people want to know well how do i do this how do i be blessed how do i you know how do i find what my purpose is and how do i find you know what it is i'm supposed to be doing start growing deep start growing deep just start praying for God to align you, for God to position you in his will. Just start praying for wisdom and understanding in certain situations. Because sometimes we're so reactive, we're never proactive. And proactive means that I'm, I'm I understand that this is not about me getting to the finish line. This is about me learning something in the process. So before I get to the finish line, before I get to the victory... I'm going, I'm going to catch this right up in here, whatever's happening here. And so that's what I wanted to um, impress upon us tonight. Um, you know, that, that's what I wanted to impress upon us tonight. You know, we, we ask God to do stuff that is, you know, beneath him. You know, there, there's, there's this, like I said, the stuff that you need God to do this year is, is things that are going to be sustainable. I don't want to ask God to do anything that's beneath him. I'm like, I don't want to waste God's time. I don't want to waste God's time. I don't want to waste God's time. You know. I don't want to waste his time. And so I want to be able to sustain the blessing. I want to be able to hold on to the blessing. And when the elements and the the, the things in, in our environment start acting up, corona and variants and this and that and the other, you know, I want to be able to hold fast. And the only way we can do that is to grow deep. Grow as deep as you can. I'm not saying be deep. Uh, Y'all don't be deep. We don't need no more deep saints. Okay. We got enough of that. But grow in depth. You know, be sober minded. You know, make sure your heart is in the right place. Make sure your intentions and your motives are right. You know, because those are the people. God is really looking for people he can trust in the earth right now. God is looking for people that he can trust. When he can't find nobody, he destroys a place. <laughs> God is looking for people he can trust with his word, with his people, with his message. God is looking for people that he can trust. And so, Lord, I'm not so concerned about what I want that you can't trust me with what you want. And that's the bottom line. That's the bottom line. I'm, I'm not so concerned with what I want that you can't trust me with what you want. I'll put that first. I'll make that a priority in my life. And there's nothing God won't do for us. And it, and it, will, it will be the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and adds no sorrow. And that is what we want. That is what we want. 
I love you guys. I didn't, um, I wanted to be consistent and, and be on and, um, and I believe that God gave me something to say. And that's what I asked him. I said, Lord, if you give me something to say, I'm going to go live every Monday. I'm going to be on time next week. Hopefully I'm not on a plane somewhere, but I had an amazing weekend. Um, just celebrating the men of God, Bishop Powell and the Powell family. Um, such a great family and uh, had an opportunity to sing there and in celebration of, of Bishop Hubert Powell's life. And then I went to celebrate a Bishop Hersey Taylor, my friend Travis Taylor, his grandfather, a great man in Kojic, a great man of God and was able to go there to that service and celebrate life with them. Um, even though people are passing, these, these people have lived good, full lives. They've given their lives to God. They've given their lives to ministry. They've, they've left a legacy behind. And so although we're sad to see them go, um, they deserve the reward of their labor. They deserve the reward of their labor. And so I was able to celebrate with them. And then I went to Dallas to full gospel holy with my, my people. I love them so, so much. Um, Apostle Herman Murray and Lady Danielle Murray, who celebrated 10 years um, of pastoring. And they took over that ministry from Bishop uh, Apostle Murray's grandfather and grandmother. And um, just such a, a blessed weekend was with the Ray sisters, Dr. Kimberly Ray and Tanya Ray, and they, I, I love them. I love them. And so, um, and so I had a really great weekend and I'm, I'm glad to be back home with my peoples, my family, my kids. Um, I'm glad to be, have made it back safe. I thought they was going to delay my flight today, but they didn't. And I was able to make it back. But, um, I wanted to jump on just to, um, encourage you tonight. I want to encourage you again. We are growing deep. We are not so concerned with height and width that we do not grow deep because we understand that depth is what sustains height. Depth is what facilitates height. Depth is what helps us to maintain height and width. Okay? We don't just want to be seen in the height in the width, but we want to make sure that we've grown, uh, we, we've developed some depth in God in the dark. And not, not just, uh, I don't want to get into that now, not just spiritually, but even, even in areas that you're working in, even in areas that you're, you're growing a business or you are, you know, you are, um, um, you know, you're working at a job, you're, you're trying to go up higher in a career. There's depth that has to be developed, whether you need to, you know, hone in on some new skills or whether you need to go back to school or whether you need to, um, you know, do a little online course or whatever it is that you need to do. We need to be concerned with developing the depth, with growing deeper so that we can sustain the height. And that's, that's just, um, you know, what I wanted to share with you guys tonight. So I pray that you were blessed. I love you. Um, I'm so excited because my sister's on the line from New Zealand. Oh, my God. So excited. I'm getting ready to FaceTime her now so she can show me the city and show me the kids. But um, I really love you guys, and I pray that you were blessed. Thank you for hanging out.